Welcome to the first ever Cristo Rey Network Virtual College Fair. We congratulate you students and parents for taking the next step in preparing for college by attending today. We're so glad you're here. And we're glad Father John Foley is here as well. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's, it is indeed a, a privilege and, a, and a, a blessing to be able to collaborate in this uh, first ever event for the Cristo Rey Network, for the Cristo Rey Network Schools. You know, all of us, all of us, students, um, teachers, parents, all of us were born with certain gifts and all we go through life trying to make those gifts contribute even more to the world we live in. Uh, this world is our responsibility. God entrusted this world to us and it's up to us to make the best of what God has given us. And that's what education is all about. It's about, it's about taking what the gifts that God has given us, the virtues that God has implanted in our souls and making them as effective as they can be. So education is a way of making, making my contribution to the world even better. Thank you, Father Foley. So students, today your community surrounds you with over 23,000 alumni nationwide and 37 high schools in 24 states, currently 12,000 students and 5,000 of those students are juniors and seniors, just like you. We're joined by 115 participating colleges. These colleges are ready to invest in your future. Some of these colleges have been partnering with us for over a decade. You'll have the opportunity, students and parents, to attend a Financial Aid 101 session offered in either English or in Spanish. If you don't attend every session, don't worry, it'll be available on YouTube, so you won't miss anything. Don't forget about the Ask Me About session. This is your opportunity to ask any question you want and to leave confident that you came and feel empowered to start your college journey. We thank you all for your commitment to your future, classes of 2022 and 2023, and your parents and guardians, students, college counselors, and college representatives. Thank you all for being here. Como una última palabra, le, bendi, le pedimos al Señor que bendiga a todos los que están envueltos en, esta, en este esfuerzo de, de familiarizarnos con, mejor con el mundo académico de la universidad. Que el Señor bendiga la buena voluntad y los... Y los y lo, la, la, el deseo de todos de, para mejorar este mundo y para mejorar la, las vidas de los que nos rodean. Que el Señor bendiga este gran familia Cristo Rey. Welcome. So, as I stated in the video. Welcome, everybody, to the Cristo Rey Network Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you here today. Uh, we do have some fantastic schools presenting, um, and my name is Christopher, and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And also, attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the attendees at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific school, or you can ask a general question to any and all of the schools. There are additional sessions today, so if you haven't signed up for those yet, uh, please do visit the website and take a look to see what's on offer. And also a recording of this session will be available at the strivescan.com backslash Cristo Rey website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our panelists. And up first, we're gonna hear from Benedictine College. Hi everyone, my name is Claire Hollis. I am one of the admission counselors at Benedictine College. Um, let me share my screen with you and we can get started. Like I said, I'm representing Benedictine College. Um, this is a small Catholic school in Atchison, Kansas. 
Um, we are a small liberal arts school. Um, and uh, without further ado. We are one of America's best Catholic colleges named by the US News and World Report. We also are very proud of the fact that we are on the Newman Guide list. Um, we're one of 15 schools recommended by the Newman Guide, um, which is uh, aid in helping choose um, authentic Catholic colleges, so if that's something you're interested in. Um, and because of that, um, one of the things that we're very proud of in that is that we do have a very robust um, campus ministry program. We are rated one of the top five ministries in the United States for the Catholic Campus Ministry Association. Um, we have a campus ministry of over 50 students um, that provide um, different um, things for students on campus as well as for high school students um, off campus. Um, We are the largest private college in the state of Kansas. Uh, we're reaching at about 2,000 students right now. We just had our largest ever freshman class enter. We reached over 600 students um, that came on our um, registered as students. We are mostly on campus um, classes. We do offer some classes in Florence, Italy with our study abroad program, which I can touch on later. Um, feel free to ask about that in the chat, um, but we, do all in-person classes here in Kansas. Like I said, we are about 2,000 students. Um, we have 47 states, 20 different countries from all over the world. Um, so you'll meet a really large range of people here at Benedictine College. I myself am an alumni. Um, I live here in Kansas now, but I'm originally from Colorado. And I have friends from all over the United States because of um, the large job that we have from all over the country. Oh, at Benedictine, we have a very strong Catholic mission. We are a Catholic Benedictine liberal arts and residential college. These make up our four pillars. Um, and then we really focus on educating men and women within a community of faith and scholarship. So I can talk about each of these a little bit. So we are a Catholic school. Like I said, we're recommended by the Newman Guide um, for an authentic Catholic education. So we really focus on what it means to be Catholic and educating our students um, in every major under that umbrella. We are Benedictine, so we have a, a monastery here on campus. We have about 30 monks living in the monastery and 80 that are affiliated with us and live elsewhere in the world, ranging anywhere from South America to Colorado um, and then onto the East Coast as well. Um, so we have 30 monks running around um, on campus. But one of the charisms of the Benedictine order is that we are uh, hospitality. So we really focus on welcoming people into our community uh, no matter your faith or background. We are a liberal arts, so on top of your major, you'll be taking other classes outside of um, your major. So if you're coming in for a STEM major, you'll also be taking English classes, theology classes, um, history classes on top of your traditional science classes, um, just as an example for you. And lastly, we are a residential college. That means that 85% of our students have children on campus. So a majority of our students do live on campus all four years. As I mentioned earlier, we are about an hour. Uh, we are in Atchison, Kansas, which is about 45 minutes of North Kansas City. Um, it takes about eight hours to get from Denver, nine hours to get from Dallas, and all our different major hubs around the area. So it's definitely uh, a small school feel, but close to a lot of different areas of the country. Like I said, there's no place like home in Kansas. Uh, Benedictine does boast over 50 majors. We are one of only four schools that small four Catholic schools that offer architecture and engineering. Um, we are accredited in engineering, civil, mechanical, electrical, um, as well as just physical engineering. Uh, we have a very robust nursing program, architecture, as well as our three largest programs, um, business, uh, education, both secondary and primary education, as well as Catholic theology. I'll give you a second just to look over some of our different majors. Um, it's very easy here to double major because you are taking all of those liberal art classes outside your major. It is very easy for students um, taking STEM classes to double major in theology, things in um, like education to take other business classes um, or anywhere in between. I mentioned earlier that we do have a study abroad program. We have about 100 students um, 
give or take, depending on how many go in our summer program, a year that study at Villa Morgan, a 500 year old foreign monastery overlooking Florence. Um, that top left hand picture is actually from the villa. Um, so you can look down back behind is where the Duomo is um, in the main city of Florence. You'll study Italian as well as some history and um, medieval history classes and that kind of thing. These are all Benedictine classes. So everything will trans doesn't even have to transfer. They are Benedictine professors, scholarships follow you there. Um, and it costs about the same of a traditional semester at Benedictine. We are um, a pricier institution, but that's because we are a private institution, but 100% of our students receive some sort of financial aid. That average financial aid is $15,000, but ranges anywhere from $11,000 to $19,000. We do offer 10 full tuition scholarships, five three-quarter tuition scholarships, as well as honoring any national merit finalists. Um, that will also receive a full tuition scholarship outside of those 10. We really boast that we take care of our fellow Ravens. Nine, one, nine in 10 graduates um, are working in a career of their choice. We have a higher internship um, rate than the average um, schools around us. We also boast that we are one of the only Catholic, we are the only Catholic college um, that boasts a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, um, Wingari Matai named, um, and we have our Wingari Matai uh, STEM Fellows Program here that you can apply for as well. If you were to apply today, we are rolling admission, so you'll hear back in somewhere between um, in the next two weeks. After you are admitted, then we'll go over um, and help you through your FAFSA information. It is not required that you fill out the FAFSA, but we highly recommend it um, to be eligible for different endowments and institutional um, scholarship opportunities. Um, after you, you have decided to come to Benedictine, you'll submit your housing application um, on a first come first serve basis on priority in which dorm you choose. So the sooner you get your housing and enrollment fee submitted, the higher chance you have of being in the dorm that you want. Um, and with that, I'll wrap up. Uh, like I said, I'm one of the admission counselors. I mostly work with students from Kansas and Colorado, um, but you can contact our director of undergraduate admissions, Becca Cottle, um, and get in contact with me or any of the other admission counselors. So be sure to be connected with us um, and feel free to ask any questions. And with that, I will give you back the screen, Chris. Thank you very much, Benedicta. Um, and just a reminder to all of our attendees, uh, please do feel free to submit any questions you may have for any of the panelists using the Q&A feature that could be questions about majors, student life, et cetera. Um, but up next, we're gonna move to Wichita State University. Hello. I'm so glad to be here with you all today. My name is Autumn Bennett. I am uh, here in Oklahoma. I am the representative from Wichita State University. I have Jill with me. She is located in Missouri, but she also uh, is a recruiter there in Missouri for Wichita State University. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot those to Jill and she can help you out. Wichita is located in Wichita, Kansas. We are the largest city in Kansas. We have about 500,000 uh, people in Wichita. So it is a big city, but it is very spread out and has a small town feel. We are a research university in an urban setting uh, opportunities. So you can get a lot of hands-on applied learning opportunities at Wichita State. Uh, the community is super supportive of, of our students. There's a lot of uh, organizations and things that you can get involved in at Wichita. Here's some just fast facts about Wichita State University. We have about 15,000 shockers. 38% uh, of those students come from a diverse background. Specifically, 14% of our students are, uh, come from a Hispanic background. 44% of our students are first-generation students. We were uh, in the top 80. Uh, of, of most affordable colleges by the college consensus. Uh, we are also a transfer destination um, uh, 
uh, for those transfers in, in Kansas. 92% of our students, um, or excuse me, 92% of our classes have less than 50 uh, students. And so we have a small uh, feel of our, in our classes as well. I'm gonna move this. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, our admissions criteria is a 2.25 unweighted GPA or a 21 on your ACT or 1080 on your SAT. We are a uh, test optional school, so you can go to wichita.edu to apply. Uh, there's a $40 application fee. There is no essay uh, for our application process, so uh, it is also self-reported. So if you have, uh, you can just put it in there yourself. You don't need anything from your counselors. We do have scholarship opportunities uh, for you, so you would wanna put in your test scores uh, to qualify for some of our scholarships. It is an unweighted uh, GPA 3.5 or a two, uh, 27 on ACT or a 1280 or top 10% in, uh, in your class to go for uh, some of our, our competitions that we do have. So get admitted before October 15th and then submit your scholarship material by November 1st. Here's a quick snapshot. Um, you can, I'm gonna throw a lot of stuff up on the screen. So if you wanna grab your phone and take some pictures, you can. Um, this is our freshman merit scholarship. So these are based off of your test scores and your GPA. So you can quickly look there to see what you would get um, for the four years. They're spread out into four, uh, uh, four in, into your four years that you are there at Wichita State. Over to the left, you also see the links where you can read more about this information on our website. Here are a lot of our scholarships that we do offer at Wichita State University. I will mention that DSI uh, competition there at the top. We give away three uh, $64,000 leadership-based scholarships. It is a competition. Uh, I would definitely say if you qualify for that with that 3.5 uh, GPA or higher and a 27 or higher on your ACT, go ahead and apply, get admitted uh, before October 15th and get that in by November 1st. And then the competition will be in Wichita on November 20th. So a lot of fun. And then others in the competition, other than those three will get, can uh, qualify for scholarship opportunities as well. You can check it out at backslash scholarship competitions. We do have shocker savings. So if you live in one of those areas that has a star, you do qualify for in-state tuition. So definitely check out our website to see where you live if you qualify for in-state tuition. If you live in one of these states, but maybe not in one of those city areas, uh, you do also qualify for a 33% discount to go to Wichita State University. Quick snapshot of some of our fees, tuition and fees um, average there on campus, housing, meal plan, uh, courses. So there's just a, a rough estimate of what it could cost you to go to Wichita State University. We pride ourselves on being an applied learning uh, university. Uh, $27 million uh, was earned uh, in about a uh, 5,000, over 5,000 different on-campus positions in our co-ops, intern opportunities, and our applied learning experiences. Here are some students on the right from NASA, Disney, uh, T-Mobile there. Uh, this young lady, she did an internship with T-Mobile and she got to meet uh, the CEO of T-Mobile. So a lot of really cool opportunities that you can take advantage of at Wichita State University. Here are our top majors. Uh, we do have over 70 different majors at Wichita State University. Their top ones are Aerospace Engineering, our Barton School of Business, Fine Arts and Media. I will say we do have a brand new Shocker Studio. It's 35,000 square foot uh, studio where you can get hands-on in your game design, filmmaking, animation, graphic design, all that uh, there in our brand new Shocker Studio. We also have Criminal Justice and Forensic Science, Education, Health, uh, health professions, dental hygiene, social work, sports management, and our honors college. But definitely check out uh, backslash majors at our website to see all the different uh, majors that we do offer. Our campus life. We have a lot of fun at Wichita State University. We have over 300 different uh, student-led organizations. If you don't have one, if we don't have one that you uh, would like to be involved in, you can create it yourself. Uh, we have camels come on Wednesdays. You can ride a camel uh, for hump day. Uh, we are part of the Shocker Athletics, so you get free tickets to our sporting events and our, our fine art events. We have a food truck plaza on our innovation campus, which is brand new, and we have esports and 
gaming. There's Wu Shock over there in the right, hanging out in our hammock lounge that uh, one of our student organizations got a grant for uh, funding that. All right, on to our dorms and our living spaces on campus. That top picture is our Shocker Hall. It was built in 2014, so very new. Uh, you get free Wi-Fi, free laundry, which is new this year, which we're really excited about. Um, and we also do not have a shared bathroom or shower with the whole floor. It's just you and your roommates uh, that will share your bathroom and uh, shower if that's important to you, which it was me when I went to Wichita State. Um, and we do also have $150 dining dollars that you can use at our on-campus restaurants like Chick-fil-A, Panda Express, Starbucks, and more. Um, if you are interested in Wichita State, go ahead and start that application pro progress, um, get, or apply, excuse me, and then uh, our application for housing will go live on October 1st. We do have travel opportunities at Wichita State University, um, our national student exchange. You can go for a semester a year uh, to other places in the United States. Uh, your scholarships and uh, credits will travel uh, with you and come back. So also our study abroad, um, we've had uh, more than 130 shockers study away in 19 different countries. So definitely take advantage of these opportunities for you to build your resume and make you more marketable when you're ready for your career. Our innovation campus is a brand new part of our campus that we have these businesses here that you see on our campus that a lot of our internships and co-op opportunities uh, partner with. We have a Hyatt uh, hotel. So if you want to travel here, um, you can stay there on campus and get a tour. Also, we do have a brand new YMCA on campus. You get a free YMCA membership to our YMCA and the other 10 um, nationally recognized YMCAs uh, in Wichita, Kansas. We also have a Starbucks, Fuzzy's Taco, um, Shocker Store, all there in our innovation campus that is continually growing. All right, here are some student resources for you. Our Office in Diversion, uh, excuse me, Office of Diversity and Inclusion uh, is definitely a really cool place for everybody to go that feels welcome. There's, uh, we have a kitchenette, we have games, you can study, you can lounge, meet with your friends. And then we also have first year advising. So you're not gonna be all by yourself. We have connections for you um, as well as our living learning communities, which connect you with, uh, people in the same uh, study uh, area of study. So you can live in the same area of them in the dorms and have study groups and things like that. And then lastly, uh, if you wanna scan that QR code to send us your information, uh, you can do that or you can uh, contact us on any of these uh, outlets uh, or contact me or Jill as well and check out our links. Go ahead and snap a picture of that. And if you have any questions, we're happy to help. Thank you very much, Wichita State. Um, as we move to our next presentation, again, just a reminder to the attendees, please do feel free to submit any questions you may have through that Q&A feature. But up next, we're gonna move to Berea College. Hello, y'all. My name is Elvia Rojas. I am, a, I am an admissions representative over with Berea College, and I am also a recent Berea graduate myself, graduated this May. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague and let him uh, introduce himself. And I am struggling with the buttons. I can't get my camera out for some reason, so I'm just gonna go ahead and present. Um, my name is Khalil Baker. I um, graduated from Berea College in 1997. I am one of the two coordinators of moderated recruitment for Berea College and also the liaison for Crystal Ray Schools. Um, Berea College was established in 1855. It's the first college in the South to educate blacks and whites and men and women together in the same classroom. And I always share that with folks because it's important to know that if you come to Berea College, you're coming to a place that was created with diversity in mind from day one. So everyone is welcome there, black, white, men and women, everyone beyond and in between those identities. Um, that's still our commitment today. That's who we stay true to. Um, we are a very welcoming college. Besides our commitment to interracial and co-ed education is also our commitment 
commitment to serving students that come from families with financial need. So to qualify for Berea College, every student has to qualify for the Pell Grant. Every student has to be Pell Grant eligible. But what goes along with that is the investment that we place in all of our students. While well, many colleges are looking for students to recruit to pay tuition to keep the light bills um, or to pay the light bills, keep the lights on sort of thing, we're looking for students to just invest in. So as you see, every student who gets into Berea College automatically qualifies for our no tuition promise scholarship. What that means is the $176,000 that it costs in tuition over your four years, you will never pay a penny of that. Every student gets full tuition scholarship. And even if you go beyond the four years, you still qualify for that same money, you keep it. And there's no catch to it, um, regardless of your grades, as long as you're a student who's still in school, you still keep that. It doesn't matter how many classes you keep, as long as you are a student, you still keep that. Um, our focus is on graduating. One of our focuses is on graduating our students debt-free. As you can see there, 49% of our most recent graduating class graduated with zero debt. Of those 51% that did graduate with debt, the average debt among them was 5,500, which means the, the overall um, average debt for all of our students was around 27, 2,800. And that's amazing compared to the national debt average, which is about 29,000 of a student graduating um, from a four-year college or university. Besides our no tuition promise, every student who works at Berea College qualifies and is given a work study position, similar to being in a Christian race school, all of our students work. So all of our students work 10 hours a week um, is, is the minimum. We are one of the eight federally recognized labor colleges. Um, where we're different than the other seven is that at the other seven, your work either helps offset the cost of your education or you're paid for it. At Berea College, it's both. It helps offset the cost of your education and that students work in every college campus office. So it helps with the cost of running the college as well, every student gets paid. In your first year, you'll get paid $2,000. And that goes up if you work more hours and in, in each year when you um, take on different positions, you get paid a little bit more. Um, what goes along with that is you get great resume building skills um, that are different than a lot of students that are in college that have to work in retail or fast food. You can do things like, for instance, my favorite example is a student that's interested in computer engineering. Every student that attends Berea College gets a free Dell laptop, free new Dell laptop computer that gets upgraded in their junior year and is theirs to keep when they graduate. So what that means is 1600 students, all our faculty, all our staff have a laptop computer. So our IT department that we call ISNS, we have a lot of students that are working there getting relevant experience um, that goes along with that. And I'll turn it over. Thank you, Khalil. This year, we are happy to share uh, with you all that the Washington Monthly has ranked us as the number 13th liberal arts college in the nation. With only 1,600 students, we are quite the small school, but please don't be fooled. Um, for such a small school as ourselves, we not only strive to make our education affordable, but we also strive to ensure uh, our students are receiving a high quality education here. Um, so at Berea, we offer uh, over 60 plus areas of studies, anything ranging from computer science to agriculture, communications, nursing, art history, and so much more. Our class ratios here at Berea, we like to see our students as individuals, um, meaning that with a student to faculty ratio of 10 to one, you will find that on average, our class sizes are about 14 students makes it easier for our students to develop a strong relationship with professors um, to ensure that each student is receiving uh, sufficient support uh, to be successful in the classroom. And as an alum myself, I can totally guarantee that you will be seen, heard, and valued in all of our, all of our different classes here on campus. Um, we have many opportunities for students to do undergraduate research, whether that's independently or if you want to do that with a professor, you'll be able to present and publish your research. Um, we also have funding opportunities for you all to attend conferences, travel for job interviews, um, or even if you need uh, professional clothing, we'll help fund all of these things. Lastly, if you're someone who knows you want to go to law school or medical school or any other 
form of graduate school, uh, we will help fund your prep materials, even down to uh, covering actual costs of those tests. And then here are a couple of opportunities that you can expect uh, to experience with Bria College. Um, in just our academic year of 2019 and 2020, 49% of our graduates were able to study abroad. A majority of our students uh, do choose to do either a semester or if they want to go during the summer, they can uh, do so uh, with just a couple of weeks. Um, this is a perfect way to receive academic credit and get a glimpse of life culture in another country. Um, you should not feel discouraged because of finances, because here at Berea, we provide you with the necessary financial support to cover a portion of the cost. Um, yeah, to cover a portion of the cost. And even then, through scholarships, you can also even lower that cost much further. Um, and your destination can be pretty much anywhere. We have sent students to Ghana, um, Japan, China, Spain, Egypt, Ireland, and so many other countries. Uh, the cool thing about us is that our Office of Internships will fund up to two internship opportunities for you. Um, and this means that for you, you're not looking to use your personal funds for housing, travel, meals, and any other expenses. We cover all of that for you. And the cool thing is you can pretty much intern uh, anywhere. You can choose to go down the road somewhere in Ohio, or even go as far as to like Washington DC, California, really anywhere. Um, we have had some pretty successful um, uh, student or successful students interned with um, the White House and PR if you're someone who's interested into podcasting, um, Harvard Medical School, um, and other wonderful places like that. And internships are a great way for you to take what you learn in the classroom and turn that into a great experience. Uh, and bonus, you do get academic credit for the completion of an internship. So there's that. And then of course, uh, we also do have um, a commitment to service learning, meaning that we want you all to go and do hands-on experience uh, with everything that you learn. So a couple classes do work closely with the community and just having our students engage with not just our campus, but our community. So one class that I'm thinking in particular is um, one of our upper level Spanish classes who do a partnership with the Hispanic Outreach Program and partner students with community members to help teach um, uh, ESL classes to community members or to help teach younger children Spanish. Um, so that's just one great example. Okay, we can move on to the next slide. And then lastly, here are some lovely individuals, some uh, you may know of, but some you may be shocked to hear that are Berea College alums, such as Dr. Kari G. Woodson, um, who is the father of Black History Month, and Akila Hughes, who is a writer, comedian, YouTuber, podcaster, and actress. And then we can move on to the next slide. And then here is how you can uh, apply to Berea. If you're, hopefully this has gotten you excited to start that process today. So the first thing you wanna do is definitely complete the online application that is completely free. Then you can look forward to sending us your high school transcript, completing a school counselor evaluation form. Um, this year we are test score optional. So don't feel like you have to send us your ACT slash SAT scores. Um, and then for your teacher recommendation form, just wanna highlight that um, it does need to come from a core content teacher, uh, but it can't uh, be unfortunately from someone who is related to you. And then lastly, definitely uh, submit the FAFSA to us. Um, and then just some key dates to keep in mind is that November 15th, which is our early action deadline. And it just means that if you're able to turn everything in by that date, hopefully you'll hear back from us sometime in December. Yeah. And um, if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to message either my colleague or I. We are always more than happy to help answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Berea. Um, and our final presentation is gonna come from the University of Nebraska, Omaha. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Michaela and I'm an admissions representative with the University of Nebraska at Omaha. 
Hi everyone, my name is Maddie Pooley. I'm also um, an admissions rep with UNO. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to send me a chat. And then I'll also be putting the links to our view book um, as well as the link to schedule a visit. We have both in-person and virtual visit options. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. At the University of Nebraska at Omaha, we believe that we give our students access to exceptional, and that includes exceptional learning, living, and location. Just to go over a few enrollment highlights, we are considered a medium-sized institution. We have about 12,768 undergraduate students. And then if you look to the right there, it shows you how that class is made up. For instance, we have about 4,100 underrepresented and then 5,324 first-gen students as well. Um, total, we have about 15,892 students and that includes our graduate students also. So as far as our academics, at University of Nebraska at Omaha, we do have over 200 different majors and programs and that is divided between six different academic colleges. For those colleges, I will let you know that a credit hour does consist of how many hours you'll put in each week. So if we have a three credit hour class, you should expect to study or put in some effort for homework about three hours for the week. To make sure that you do have that exceptional experience within your academics, we do have our academic and career development center. They offer some success tools. You can do job interviewing skills, resume building, just so that they can go over your resume before you were to submit that to a job. Um, they also kind of work with our students to make sure that you're doing the best in regards to if you choose to do undecided for your major, then they also work with our um, exploratory study students. So as far as being flexible, we understand with the pandemic going on, a lot of students have preferences in regards to how they take their courses. We have four different modes. We have our in-person, our remote, our online, which I like to say is a little bit more self-paced. And then we have our hybrid instruction. And that's pretty much if you were to take a lab, well, science with a lab, you may do your science remotely, and then you'll do your lab on campus with us. Um, like I mentioned before, we are a medium-sized institution. Our faculty to student ratio is about 15 to one. So as you get into some of those higher up classes within your degree, you should expect class sizes about 40 or less. And then I will say in some of those general education course, uh, courses, class sizes are a little larger, but we do pride ourselves on making sure our students feel involved and included. So you can go up, ask questions of the teacher after class, and then also attend office hours of those teachers that you have. So as far as our experiences, we like to think that we have exceptional experiences and that lifestyle. So as far as experiences, we have over 200 different registered programs and student organizations. Um, I like to tell students, say that you look through those 200 and you don't see something that you're interested in. You definitely can create your own student organization. You would just need three other students and then a staff or faculty member to back you up. I will also say that for our math forensics, which is our speech team, excuse me, uh, we are award-winning for that. So that's definitely one of the student organizations that we have on campus that, like I said, is award-winning. It's a wonderful team. It's a great way to get involved on campus. Also, as far as concerts, games, exhibits, and things that we offer, most of our students do get into those events for free. In regards to exceptional lifestyle, just to mention our housing really quickly, we have apartment style housing all the way around. You'll have your own bedroom and then you share a bathroom with one other person within your apartment. So as far as affordability, I will say that we are among the top four as far as affordability in the Midwest for universities. For our tuition, I'm going to look at our Nebraska resident tuition and then also over to the right, you see our non-resident tuition as well. You can look to pay about $8,100 if you're a Nebraska resident. For housing and meals, that'll run you another $10,100. I will say if you choose to stay outside of campus or get an apartment with friends off campus, you're, you are able to do that your freshman year. So that would then decrease that amount that you see here. And then for books and supplies, it'll run you about 1,120. So total, you're looking at about $19,452. And again, that's for your fall and your spring semester. But we like to call that our sticker price. Most of our students do not pay that entire amount out of pocket. They receive some kind of financial aid, some kind of scholarship. And leading right into that, we feel like we have exceptional financial aid for our students. First and foremost, that FAFSA that opens up October 1st, that's student's way to get access to grants, free money, um, loans, and then work study. We have a section on our website that lists work study opportunities specifically for our students who qualify for work study by filling out their FAFSA. 
Um, on top of that, we also have the Nebraska Promise that assists in paying for some of that cost for our students. I will let you know, Nebraska Promise covers just tuition. So if you were to qualify for Nebraska Promise, your tuition would be covered. Um, that program pretty much, if you are Pell Grant eligible or you have an income within your family household of 60,000 or less, you will qualify for that. And that pays up to 15 credit hours of tuition dollars per semester. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as you're looking at different universities. And then if you look to the right there, it does list some of those priority deadlines in order to qualify for Nebraska Promise. So on top of the FAFSA and the other financial aid, we have scholarships at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. These that are listed here are our merit-based scholarships. You'll be able to get into the running for these just by submitting an application. You don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to submit an extra essay or anything along those lines. You get into the running just by submitting your application. I will say that for guaranteed acceptance of these, you will have to meet the criteria that's listed here, but say that you don't have an ACT score because we are test optional. So you don't have to submit an ACT or SAT score to be admitted. Um, you could go GPA only and that's listed here as well. And then we also have our new holistic approach where we're able to look at students total um, information, their GPA, the classes, et cetera, and just kind of make sure we're giving you the best award possible that we can give you. In addition to those merit-based scholarships, we also have some of those outside scholarships. These three that are listed here, we they actually have departments on our campus. So they're able to give our students some additional support as far as mentors, um, advising. You do get to take some smaller classes within those programs. So that's a nice way to get some general eds out the way, but then only have smaller class sizes. Also keep in mind that with outside scholarships, including these three, they have their own set of criteria and deadlines. So just make sure that you're keeping a lookout for what a scholarship requires, and then also making sure that you meet those deadlines that they have so that you're able to get your information in in time. So aside, like I said, we have our Nebraska resident tuition and we also have out-of-state students at the campus. Um, these are some of the scholarships that we have for some of our out-of-state students. Again, for our out-of-state students, it does look like a smaller amount, but I definitely encourage students to reach out to our financial support office just to kind of get some more assistance and finding some information for scholarships if you are an out-of-state resident student. So far as exceptional beginnings, I'm gonna go over our admissions requirements really quickly. Um, overall, you're pretty much gonna have your high school curriculum that we require in order to get in. And I will say that if you meet your high school curriculum that's listed here, those four units of English, uh, three of math, three of social science, uh, the three natural sciences, and one of those does have to include a lab. And I will say for some of our departments, such as our College of Engineering um, and our education department, they do have slightly different criteria. So definitely keep that in mind, depending on what you wanna study uh, when you come to our university. Um, you do need two years of a foreign language and then one elective. I will say, say that you don't meet one of these or you only have one foreign language, don't count yourself out. You definitely have the opportunity to still attend UNO. We have an admissions by review committee. They look at every single application individually to make sure that we're giving students an opportunity to still attend our university, even if you do, for instance, only have one foreign language or something along those lines. So in addition to that high school curriculum, we also require one of the following. Again, keep in mind we're test optional, but say that you have uh, 20 or more on the ACT, a 1040 or higher on your SAT, a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher, or you're in the top 50%. So one of those four, and you meet the high school curriculum recommended that we have over to the left, you are considered a guaranteed admissions. If you were to fill out your application and um, meet that criteria, you would hear from us within 24, 48 hours usually. So last but not least, feel free to follow us on any of these platforms. You can also give us a call, send us a text message, send us an email, and we'll get back with you in answering those questions. Thank you very much, University of Nebraska Omaha, and thank you uh, to all of our fantastic schools today for your great presentations. Uh, this does bring us to the end of our fair. Uh, before we wrap up, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that we definitely want to um, thank all of our attendees for joining us. Uh, hopefully you reach out to these schools and continue these conversations. Um, and just a few quick housekeeping items. When you do close this window, you will receive a very quick um, five question survey that we ask you to take a minute and complete. And again, if you haven't looked at the other sessions being offered today, please do so. 
um, and a recording of this session will be available at the strivescan.com back Krista Ray website. But thank you again to everybody. Uh, thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to all of our attendees. I uh, hope you have a great day and uh, good luck in your college search.